So uh, you remember that we were talking about um, trying to make graphene topological that is uh, whether it can act as a topological insulator and uh, one of the, the reasons for the suspicion uh, was that uh, it has an unconventional berry phase that is when the electrons go around the uh, Dirac points um, they pick up a phase which is pi uh, in, a, in a closed orbit around the Dirac points k or the k prime points uh, and also uh, you know these uh, the sense of rotation is different in the k and the k prime points uh, okay so uh, in in one uh, of the dirac points say k it rotates clockwise and in the other dirac point it rotates anti clockwise so this is said that uh, there is a topological charge that is associated with uh, the electrons in graphenes which has a value plus 1 and minus 1 which are uh, related to these uh, berry phase of pi and minus pi and um, we wanted to uh, sort of understand if uh, there is a, a definitive way that uh, uh, that graphene can be made a topological insulator and it turns out that um, if you add a mass term that is if you add a term which looks like uh, m i uh, sigma z it simply sort of shifts the uh, energy levels there is of course a, a gap that opens up at the Dirac points and however that uh, gap is uh, a trivial uh, gap and uh, why it's called a trivial gap let's see that uh, so we have just plotted the band structure of uh, Semenov insulator in this E versus K plot and it's uh, plotted over the Brillouin zone uh, from the gamma point to K point M point K prime point and so on and these uh, if you remember these uh, k and the k prime points are the Dirac points and you see that uh, there is a gap that opens up of magnitude 2 mi at both the Dirac points okay. This is of course an insulator uh, now the question is that whether it is a topological insulator which means the uh, boundaries of the system behave any differently than the bulk and for that we have resorted to a second approach which is uh, by uh, breaking the uh, time reversal symmetry in graphene by introducing a complex uh, next nearest neighbor hopping. So, that is why we call it as NNN hopping and this is called as a Holden insulator or it is also a named churn insulator because of the reason that uh, you see uh, there is this uh, plot here where, where the churn number is plotted in the phase uh, or the parameter space defined by this uh, capital M and phi. So, capital M is nothing but the MI that we have written in the last slide uh, and phi is the uh, flux uh, related to the Holden flux and this is uh, the flux that appears here ok. So, that uh, phi is here. So, which means that uh, you know there are these uh, second neighbor hoppings that you see are associated their complex second neighbor hopping uh, which are like uh, T2 e to the power i phi and uh, the sense of the hopping like this one is an anti clockwise hopping that you see here let us call it as 1 and let us call it as you know uh, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 ok. Uh, these hoppings are all anti clockwise hopping and these uh, anti clockwise hopping comes with a uh, they all come with a uh, sort of sign which is opposite to that of the, the clockwise hoppings and so on ok. And if you want to make this uh, uh, these hoppings uh, among the next nearest neighbors to be purely imaginary you can take phi to be equal to pi by 2 because your uh, T2 uh, exponential i phi for uh, T2 e phi equal to pi by 2 becomes equal to T2 um, e to the power i pi by 2 which is nothing but equal to i t 2 ok. So, it is uh, either i t 2 or uh, it is minus i t 2 uh, depending on the clockwise hopping or the anti clockwise hopping and um, that is the scenario that uh, Holden considered which could in principle make graphene to be topological and uh, I just want to remind you that this uh, was actually told by Holden in 1988 which is uh, uh, much ahead of uh, the discovery of graphene. So, it was uh, purely a honeycomb lattice in which such a thing has been uh, thought of and then uh, it would be uh, giving rise to a topological insulating property to this which is evident from this uh, plot that is in the right. Uh, uh, bottom part of this uh, there is a churn number phase diagram we will come to that in some time. 
Okay. So, uh, let us uh, take this Holden suggestion and see that uh, what it uh, gives rise to uh, whether we can understand uh, a model uh, or rather we can write down the Hamiltonian that comes out and write it down in K space and see the how the low energy uh, behavior or the low, low energy properties of that model and so on and then um, really assess that whether that gives rise to a, a topological insulator. Okay. So, uh, this uh, Holden term, so we write Holden model. Okay. And uh, the model is written as, uh, let us write it as H H. Uh, this is equal to a T 2 and then there is a sum over. Now, uh, just to make sure that we are talking about second neighbor hopping. So, we write it with a, a, a double bracket and i and k and exponential i um, nu i k phi and a c i dagger c k plus a Hermitian conjugate. Okay? So, that is the Holden term and uh, of course, there are these uh, nearest neighbor tight binding term that is there. And as well, uh, if one wants to uh, consider the Semenov term that is M, M i sigma z that also is there. Uh, we will uh, deal with all of them uh, just in a while, but just this is just the Holden model in which uh, he proposed that there is second neighbor hopping. So, these are uh, hopping of electrons between next neighboring site, not the neighboring site, next neighboring site. And uh, there is a, it is a complex hopping and that is why it is uh, represented by this phase and uh, this amplitude is T 2 and the phase is given by this and there is also a new k i equal to minus new uh, i k is same as minus of new k i that uh, gives you the chirality. Chirality means the, uh, the sign change uh, as one uh, considers clockwise hopping and anti-clockwise hopping. Okay? And uh, in this particular case, Holden uh, considered uh, phi to be equal to pi by 2 such that uh, the hopping becomes completely complex and then it is written as i t 2 and uh, this is equal to sum over i k. Just to remind you that this double bracket is to ensure that we are talking about second neighbor and not the nearest neighbor. So, this would mean nearest neighbor hopping and this would mean next nearest neighbor hopping. Okay? Oh, this is the usual convention that is followed and uh, this is equal to nu i k c i dagger c k plus uh, Hermitian conjugate. We have been writing the Hamiltonians uh, all of them uh, you know uh, that have been previously discussed um, uh, by these in the second quantized notation and uh, one should get familiar with this. Uh, this means that uh, there has been a um, an electron or a particle that is uh, annihilated at uh, k uh, that is site index k and has been created at i which means that there is a uh, hopping that has taken place or there is a transfer of that uh, particle or the electron that had taken place. Okay? So, this is the uh, Holden Hamiltonian and we will uh, do a, a Fourier transform of that uh, just to make sure that we are not uh, forgetting the total Hamiltonian. So, the total Hamiltonian let us write it as some h, um, okay, we can write it as k or we write it initially without uh, you know referring to whether we are writing in k space or in real space. So, this is the tight binding term and uh, then there is a m i sigma z term which is the Semenov term and then there is this h Holden which is denoted by h h. Okay? So, this is the total Hamiltonian that one has to solve in order to get the energy spectrum and assess uh, that whether there is uh, a topological behavior that is the bulk of uh, the material behaves differently than the edges. We will come to this in a while just a priori. Uh, since we are talking about edges and the bulk, uh, we cannot be talking about uh, uh, systems which are infinite in uh, you know both the directions. Okay, so, we will have to consider finite uh, systems which will be called as ribbons which uh, we will just take uh, in, in a moment. Okay, so, consider this Hamiltonian and uh, you do a Fourier transform of this Hamiltonian. And 
how you Fourier transform is uh, you can do that you can write this h h of k this is of course uh, this is written equation 1 is written in the okay let me make this as equation 1 and this as equation 2 uh, equation 2 uh, is in the real space uh, so uh, this k is not uh, wave vector but it's a site index however this k uh, when i write it with a, a vector that's a momentum or the wave vector that we are referring to so, uh, this is just a step that I am skipping, you should fill it up. Uh, this is equal to a minus T2 and then the sum over K and twice of uh, sin of uh, K dot uh, A1, I will show you what A1 and A2 are, sin of K dot A2 and uh, minus sin of uh, K uh, so, this is a k dot a1 minus a2. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, this is your the k part of the Hamiltonian and uh, this is c k uh, up dagger c k a and a minus c k b down dagger c k b and uh, this is the operator part of it and this is the coefficient the one that is in the square bracket is the coefficient which comes because of the Fourier transform. All right. And uh, what are these uh, A's and A1's and A2? So, let me uh, draw this uh, unit cell of graphene and uh, this is uh, equal to so. Okay. So, this is your A1 and this is your A2. Okay. So, these are called as the direct lattice vectors and they also connect the next nearest neighbors. So, A1 is written as A by 2 uh, 3x cap plus uh, root 3y cap and uh, A2 is written as uh, A2 uh, 3x cap minus root 3y cap. Okay. So, these are the um, vectors, the direct lattice vectors which are written here and um, uh, these, uh, these k vectors are uh, the two dimensional uh, wave vectors in the plane and uh, so this is kx and ky. Okay, and uh, A1 and A2. So, everything is defined and uh, just to make sure that uh, this is a hopping that is diagonal in the sublattice basis, uh, your sigma denotes the sublattice degrees of freedom. It, it goes from a A sublattice to a A sublattice and a B to a B. Uh, and as you see that these are the red ones are the one type of sublattice, say for example, A sublattice and this um, blue ones are the B sublattice. So, now you see the dotted lines denote hopping uh, from A to A or B to B and that is why you have uh, this as the term that uh, that we find it here. Okay. And uh, so, uh, now what we need to do is that uh, we of course, uh, can uh, plot this, this Hamiltonian by uh, just uh, solving all the terms that is including a tight binding and a mi sigma z and this term, we can put it in a 2 by 2 form and um, it will come in the form of a d dot sigma and uh, we can uh, plot the eigenvalues or I mean and find out the eigenvectors of that Hamiltonian which we will anyway do. But uh, before that we uh, let us do the analytic things of finding the low energy part of the dispersion um, by expanding around the k points. And uh, I showed you here that uh, these are the k points which in the absence of these uh, second complex second neighbor hopping they are touching linearly like this. Okay. Now, as you give this uh, uh, this term which is mi sigma z here, uh, they become like this okay. and, and slight bit of you know uh, sort of uh, curvature that comes here uh, which is uh, uh, you know. So, it is like this and of course, as you see that it is slightly quadratic there and um, so, this is the gap that we uh, wanted to open up. But at the same time, we also have in mind that it is just not opening up of, of a gap, but it is something more than that and let us see that uh, how we arrive uh, at something more than that. Okay. So, uh, let us write down the low energy Holden model.
Holden Hamiltonian or Holden model. Okay. So, low energy means that we will uh, take this uh, uh, Q vector and uh, expand it around uh, these Dirac points. Okay. So, this k is the wave vector of the electrons and this is a Dirac point. So, this can be um, k or k prime and uh, so this is uh, it could be you know uh, as well a k prime and whenever I uh, denote a Dirac point I write it a little bigger so that uh, you understand that this is not the variable k vector. Okay. So, um, if you want to write this down then we can uh, we can write this as uh, the low energy part uh, or rather uh, the, let me just do some simplification. So, this is equal to k and uh, there is a, a h of k z um, and a sigma z and then of course, the, the term that is there that is you know that uh, c k a up dagger c uh, k and so on. Uh, now, that part is taken into account in the in the z uh, uh, sigma z thing that is uh, the b uh, comes with a with a negative sign here uh, and this h of k is nothing but um, uh, that is the z component of the uh, d vector which we have uh, been talking about uh, for quite some time. So, it is 2 t 2 and a sign of uh, k uh, dot a 1 minus sign of uh, k dot a 2 and minus sign of uh, k uh, dot a 1 minus a 2 I have defined a 1, a 2 and k all everything there. Now, this is that h of k and uh, what you do is that uh, if you expand around the k points we can write down uh, h of uh, q uh, and which is equal to some about those Dirac points which are uh, we will just call them as 0 for the moment and do a Taylor expansion about these uh, Dirac points. Uh, so, this is the first term in the Taylor expansion which is a constant and the other terms uh, are like this 2 t 2 and uh, now uh, I will just take the small uh, wave vector which uh, now we write it as q. So, it is a q x x cap plus a q y y cap. Uh, this uh, k has been expanded around the Dirac points and uh, then dotted with uh, uh, a by 2 and um, uh, 3 x cap plus uh, root 3 y cap. Uh, you should do it a little more carefully that is at, uh, write down the exact uh, k points. You can do it uh, k or k prime points it does not matter, but you should write down the coordinate of the k point which we have uh, shown how to calculate and then do the expansion the Taylor expansion about that. Then you will get exact uh, factors which will uh, finally, you know write it. Okay, so, I am just simply writing sin as you know that sin of x equal to x for small x. Okay, and this is what we have been uh, applying here. So, this is that and then you have a q x uh, x cap plus a q y y cap uh, dotted with a by 2 and a 3 x cap minus root 3 y cap and a minus a q x x cap plus a q y y cap and dotted with a uh, 3 x cap plus root 3 y cap and this is a 1 minus a 2. So, 3 x cap plus root 3 y cap and uh, if you do this uh, open up the bracket uh, you will have uh, nothing left here which means that uh, you can see this carefully uh, that q x into 3 will become 3 q x and there will be a root over 3 q y and uh, there will be a minus uh, 3 q x which will get cancelled and so on and uh, there will be uh, so this anyway cancels. So, there will be a 2 root 3 k y and this 2 root 3 q y q y will come from this other 2 terms. So, this is uh, this whole thing becomes equal to 0 and you are left with a constant term constant which is h at the Dirac points and when you calculate that this uh, constant will have some value. And, uh, uh, that tells you uh, that uh, the low energy dispersion of the Holden model uh, does not disperse which means that it has no Q dependence it is independent of Q. Okay. So, for this is the uh, low energy form for that and uh, one can write down 
the Holden Hamiltonian uh, which is as mh sigma z uh, gamma z okay gamma z once again denote the uh, valley degree of freedom and sigma z is of course the sublattice degree of freedom okay and uh, so this mh is the holden uh, mass and it has a value uh, as i said that you have to do it carefully in order to get this uh, particular value or this constant and this comes out as 3 root 3 t2 okay uh, in some literature you will find it a minus 3 root 3 t2 but it doesn't matter i mean this is the magnitude of the holden term so just to uh, understand what is this mh or what is the holden term just like in the semenov you got a mi and here you get a mh which uh, is uh, because of this holden you know the mass and that depends on the second neighbor hopping amplitude t2 okay and uh, it has of course uh, different signs at the different uh, sublattices which means at a sublattice it is equal to plus uh, 3 root 3 t2 and uh, at the other uh, sublattice it becomes equal to minus um, uh, 3 root 3 t2 and so on so forth okay so um, the total hamiltonian we have all worked out earlier the hamiltonian corresponding to the uh, the tight binding part as well as the semenov part uh, when i say the semenov part what i mean is that uh, you simply try to put two different masses uh, i mean uh, that is the same magnitude but different signs at the two sublattices and uh, hope that that opens up a gap well, of course it does but uh, that gap uh, makes it an insulator uh, and not a topological insulator okay what it means is that uh, the uh, bulk of the material or in inside of the material inside of a you know a graphene sheet uh, which we will call it as a ribbon uh, that behaves in the same way as the edges that is the edge has no different uh, behavior than the bulk uh, and that is uh, not called a topological insulator it's like an ordinary insulator only when the edges have conducting uh, modes or conducting uh, states that is called as a topological insulator and this is what has been um, elaborately discussed in the context of uh, quantum hall effect okay so i uh, now combine all the three terms and write down this h of q uh, this is equal to a h cross a vf uh, and then a qx sigma x gamma z uh, plus a q y sigma y uh, and now I combine uh, both these terms because both of them are like uh, uh, they have a sigma z term excepting that one has a extra gamma z uh, which uh, the Semenov term does not have and uh, so we will write this as uh, so this is the total uh, low energy dispersion or uh, low energy dispersion for the total Hamiltonian. Uh, this we have already seen this part. So, this is tight binding and this is effects of breaking time reversal symmetry. and uh, m tilde is nothing but uh, m i uh, gamma z uh, what it means is that m tilde has a value m i plus m h uh, at k that is at one of the Dirac points and this has another sign at the other Dirac point. Okay, so these both are Dirac points. Okay, so it has uh, two different signs, which means that the magnitude of the gap is not um, identical at um, at both the Dirac points, and uh, and they kind of differ by this. Okay, so if you uh, look at 
uh, you know the spectrum for the Holden model then uh, it looks like this uh, this is numerically calculated for this Hamiltonian that we have written down here rather here but then uh, for analytic purpose uh, we have uh, done a Taylor expansion of the Hamiltonian at low k uh, and this is how you get this uh, thing. Now again you see that there is a, a gap so there is a gap here ok I mean I am sorry I did not mean to touch that but then uh, it may not be very visible to that uh, these uh, uh, gap and this gap uh, are not the same uh, they should not be unless uh, uh, while generating this plots I have taken uh, mi to be equal to 0. Uh, so, in any case uh, what it means is that uh, the gap will at this uh, one of the k points will be like mi plus mh uh, and this will be like mi minus mh this is what it should be. So, there will be a little uh, tilted on one side and uh, that is what will give you the dispersion. Now, if you consider this dispersion it is written as electronic spectrum for the Holden or it is called as a churn insulator and churn insulator uh, the name has uh, been coined because the churn number is not 0 and it is an insulator and it is a topological insulator. You see that uh, the band structure does not look any different and the band structure is absolutely identical there is a gap at the Fermi level. Uh, no matter what the magnitude of the gap is ok and that is exactly the same here as well. You have uh, a gap and uh, this gap has opened up is this topological that is the question that we ask is this model topological. That is the question and how do we confirm if it is topological because uh, here uh, as opposed to the other case where you have just introduced a mass term here you have broken the time reversal symmetry ok. And uh, uh, in order to answer this question uh, you know uh, you sort of uh, draw a finite size ribbon. Now, uh, I want to sort of spend one or two minutes here trying to uh, make you understand that uh, if you want to see how the edges are different as compared to the bulk you have to bring in the concept of edges. Uh, now, that means that you cannot talk about an infinite system in both the directions ok. Uh, it, it is certainly not an infinite uh, system it, it cannot be an infinite system and it is uh, uh, now one can do one simplification here instead of taking a sort of finite system in both the directions uh, one is entitled to take a finite size only in the y direction. So, this is the y direction has been shown and in the x direction it is uh, infinite. So, x direction uh, the ribbon is infinite and it is called as a ribbon or a nano ribbon uh, depending on what is the size of the ribbon is uh, infinite and in y direction the ribbon is finite. Now, if that is the case you can uh, act take the uh, the size in the y direction to be like uh, as if uh, you know the edge modes that will appear on the top edge does not interact with the one that appears at the bottom edge which means they are at least sufficiently far apart uh, may not be infinity, but uh, the, and it depends upon your computational skills and I mean the power that you have uh, which would be scaling with the system size in the y direction. So, more you have a number of atoms and number of unit cells in the y direction uh, you will have more and more uh, number of uh, I mean the Hamiltonian size will go up and it will take longer time to solve the problem. But uh, nevertheless I mean you can take something around uh, uh, 12 to 14 unit cells or 40 to 50 unit cells in the y direction and that should be uh, good enough in order to calculate uh, this uh, uh, quantities uh, or, or to see the existence of the edge modes in the system 
um, for this particular system that is the Holden model, but it does not exist for the Semenov insulator and we will show that. Okay. A little bit of uh, work has to be done and this is uh, it is numerical work, but it you, you need to understand how uh, the numerics is done because uh, the numerics by itself cannot uh, solve the problem. We will have to code things, you will have to give it uh, in the computer so that it is able to solve. And let me take a, a, a sort of a strip uh, in the y direction and as I said that uh, the y direction will decide uh, the length in the y direction will decide the size of the Hamiltonian and hence the time to solve uh, the problem. So, we have taken a small uh, strip in the y direction and try to uh, sort of uh, consider a tuple. Let us see what a tuple means. A tuple means uh, that you see this A1 uh, and a B1 and uh, a B2 here and a A2 here. So, uh, this will called as a say a tuple. Okay. And um, so, this red will have uh, three neighbors, uh, not this red, but say this red will have three neighbors which are B2 here, B3 here and something here. Okay. So, these are because that is at the edge uh, we have to leave that, but suppose at this moment we are thinking that there is some other atom there, uh, but uh, the presence of age is important that uh, you have to realize. Okay? So, uh, we will talk about this as n equal to 1 and uh, this as uh, maybe you know n equal to 2 and so on so forth and then write down uh, the equation of motion which is nothing but writing down the Schrodinger equation h psi equal to e psi for a uh, sort of given a real space problem such as this. Okay? So, we write things here. So, the tuples are n equal to 1. Okay? So, uh, in this tuple there are three neighbors and let us call them as 1 a uh, 0. Uh, 1 will uh, correspond to n equal to 1 and a uh, this a will correspond to a sub lattice and a 2 a in n equal to 2 and a and then this is equal to 1 a and a delta. Okay? When I say 0 it means the same tuple which means that uh, this uh, hopping from say for example, this uh, red a 1 here to this that is the same tuple and so on and then once when you go to the next tuple you talk about n equal to 2 and things like that. Okay? And this delta is basically the you go out of the tuple and uh, is the next uh, you know the unit cell that you have. So, uh, there are two in the same tuple uh, that is uh, same n uh, value and uh, uh, not n value, but the same uh, unit cell and then uh, one connecting to the other unit cell. So, here 1 and 2 denote the value of n. Okay. So, we uh, want to write down the equation of motion. Now, while doing that we uh, sort of resort to a simplification because otherwise it will become too big to write uh, you know in, in the class and uh, by hand uh, we will only talk about um, the, the nearest neighbor hopping. Okay? Uh, but in Holden model do remember that there are this uh, second neighbor hopping. Uh, the principle is just the same excepting that you have more uh, you know things to worry about that is more hoppings and more terms to worry about. The size of the system will of course go up and this is for one tuple connecting to the nearest one. Uh, if you have such many such uh, things, uh, the Hamiltonian will be a little big, but that has to be done anyway using a computer. So, uh, writing down the equation of motion So, this E B 1 that is uh, E psi which is H psi is 8 A T uh, A 1 plus a T A 2. A 1 and A 2 are amplitudes of uh, corresponding to the A sub lattice for n equal to 1 and n equal to 2. And there are three neighbors the 
the last one is uh, exponential minus i k x delta. And one thing I um, missed saying that here uh, k uh, y is not a good quantum number. Quantum number. And we will deal with the system along the y direction in real space, uh, but uh, since this is infinite in the x direction k x is a good quantum number. Now, this is little strange that uh, you have a two dimensional wave vector you take one of them to be a good quantum number that is you express uh, the wave function in terms of k x. Uh, but not uh, in terms of ky because there is nothing uh, like a ky. So, ky there is no periodicity in the y direction. So, you cannot uh, define a ky. So, we will write down the Hamiltonian in the real space corresponding to the y direction and that is why the size of the Hamiltonian will depend upon how many unit cells we are considering in the y direction. Okay. So, this is uh, one of them uh, and this is like E A 2 is equal to T B 1 uh, plus a T B 2 plus a T B 2 uh, E to the power minus I k x delta uh, E B 2 is equal to T A 3. Now, we have to go uh, from n equal to you know uh, 1 to I mean n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 and then we have to go to n equal to 3. Uh, plus a t a 2 plus a t a 2 uh, e to the power i k x delta as I told that k x continues to be a, a good quantum number, but there is no k y. So, it is only the parallel uh, wave vector is important. So, e b a 1 is equal to uh, t b 1 plus a t uh, b 1 e to the power i k x delta. Okay. So, you see that there are 2 minus k x i k x delta and 2 plus i k x delta and so on. So, we can uh, now uh, form a, a matrix uh, corresponding to this. And uh, the matrix will look like uh, we will write it in the uh, a 1 b 1 a 2 b 2 basis and uh, a 1 b 1 a 2 b 2 and uh, so uh, there is 0 here and then there is alpha star I will tell you what alpha is. So, alpha is equal to t uh, 1 plus exponential i k x delta and uh, so, this is equal to 0, 0, alpha uh, 0, t uh, 0. So, alpha is just the uh, shorthand notation for the, um, the exponential term, the term that is there with the exponential. Okay. So, 0, uh, t uh, 0, alpha and uh, 0, 0, alpha star and 0. So, you can diagonalize this matrix for uh, just one uh, tuple that we have considered and then can uh, find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, you do it for as many of them as you want and then uh, solve the problem in the real space. Okay? So, this is the general scheme uh, of finding out the edge characteristics of a uh, uh, graphene nano ribbon. This can be done for a square lattice nano ribbon and so on. I am not saying this is the only way to do it. There are other ways such as the Green's function method etcetera, uh, which I do not want to go into, but this method itself is quite powerful in finding out uh, the uh, the edge characteristics of a ribbon. Okay? So, uh, I, I write down the uh, edge states uh, of a Semenov insulator by uh, writing. So, this k is that you see is uh, k x uh, that is which in direction that uh, there is a translational invariance and you see that there is a m i term there uh, the last term corresponding to the uh, a sub lattice and there is a minus m i term corresponding to the b sub lattice and so on. These are compact uh, forms of writing down that 4 by 4 equation, which I just showed you here. So, this 4 by 4 equation or 4 coupled equations. So, uh, this is that. So, for the Semenov insulator and um, if you write it down for the Holden model, uh, it uh, has this form 
and where of course you can put phi equal to pi by 2 this is what we have uh, committed ourselves to and uh, you see that there is a t2 and the, there is a t2 and so on and again k refers to the kx uh, wave vector okay so uh, these are the uh, the amplitudes uh, so this is like uh, writing down you know uh, so a k n of course refers to that uh, unit cell index that i said and a b k n uh, so this is the two uh, equations the two coupled equations that will give rise to the amplitudes of the wave function at the a and b sub lattices okay and uh, if you plot them uh, this is for the Semenov insulator that is uh, where mi uh, there is a term mi corresponding to uh, plus mi for the a sub lattice and minus mi for the b sub lattice. You see that there is a bulk gap everywhere and there are this edge mode actually splits from the bulk and you know goes to as a function of kx. So, this uh, is root 3 kx a kx a is just to make it dimensionless and the root 3 is just added for convenience uh, in order to you know plot it's easier to plot it with root 3 kx a rather than just kx and you see that uh, the Fermi energy is uh, denoted by the red line uh, red uh, dash dot line and uh, there is a gap everywhere in a narrow ribbon uh, okay so this is a calculation for a nano ribbon and uh, there is a gap everywhere and there are no edge modes and this is what is um, expected and so semenov insulator is not a topological insulator Okay. So, this is what the story comes out uh, that uh, just by putting a mass term one cannot get a topological insulator, but now you see uh, the Holden model there is a bulk gap. So, this is the bulk and uh, so this is bulk valence band and this is bulk conduction band. Okay. And you see that uh, there are two modes that these are uh, like getting split from the uh, bulk and they are crossing the Fermi energy which will give rise to conductivity and that is why topological insulators are interesting because of their edge property. You see the bulk behaves uh, differently than the edges, bulk has, a in, has an insulating property whereas the edges have a this uh, conducting property and um, what we have done is that we have calculated the uh, chirality of the electron or the sense of motion of the electrons uh, at the two points u point and the v point and it can be seen that uh, the u at the u point the electron moves uh, from uh, the right to the left okay whereas at the point v it moves from left to right. So, they have used opposite chirality and this is what I had been told earlier that uh, even in a quantum hall sample if you remember that the electrons actually move in this direction for one edge and in the other direction for the other edge uh, and the two edges are far apart that there is no the possibility that they would you know uh, change uh, sides. It is like uh, highways uh, in which the cars move and the uh, left lane is for uh, the ones that are going from the bottom to up there or uh, in this direction and uh, uh, this will go in this uh, the, uh, on the other side of the highway they will go in the opposite direction and this is what uh, uh, makes Holden model so a topological insulator. And uh, this is what was expected. In fact, we wanted to find that uh, one can make graphene uh, by adding uh, some terms. It is not only adding some terms, it is like destroying certain symmetries. By destroying certain symmetry, we can make uh, graphene to be um, acting uh, as if it is like a quantum hall sample. Okay? So, uh, graphene indeed can act like a 
quantum hall okay and um, well i mean uh, this is the uh, main motive behind this and uh, we are yet uh, not done with this uh, because we have to understand uh, we of course have gotten one very good instinct that um, uh, that there are edge modes in the system uh, the bulk behaves differently than the edges now we have to uh, calculate a topological invariant which is a churn number here because there is a time uh, reversal symmetry being broken and uh, this uh, will give rise to the churn number phase diagram which is uh, what will be discussed in the next class uh, and uh, so uh, we just want to you know wrap up saying that that it has prospects graphene has prospects to be used as a uh, topological insulator if uh, one can have such uh, terms that break the time reversal symmetry or uh, these can be uh, sometimes these Holden uh, terms that is a second neighbor complex hopping uh, is referred to as the intrinsic spin orbit coupling. So, if, if there are such spin orbit couplings which uh, are strong uh, then uh, graphene can uh, be used as a, a topological insulators with such properties. We will uh, see the phase diagram next. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.